Good evening, good evening. This is uh, another episode of This Brother Talks. Uh, my name is Tony Crawford, and I'm coming to you um, uh, weekly uh, at 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern. Um, just coming to give you my opinion on everything sports. Uh, as you can see today, I'm rocking my Eagles because, you know, it's fly, Eagles fly. That's the way I look at it. And can't nobody tell me anything different. Um, but, you know, we got a, a lot of football and stuff to cover today. Uh, week one of the NFL just started. So um, for any of you that, that get on, participate, check everything out, I just want to say appreciate it. Appreciate you getting on. Appreciate you entertaining uh, me, entertaining you, and you also entertaining me. So let's get down to things and uh, let's see what this first comment is. <laughs> uh, they tell, I, I'm going to talk about that in a second, man. <laughs> All right. So we got a uh, week, uh, great week one. Uh, I think we had a, a good host of uh, NFL football games. You know, um, we saw some good, we saw some bad, we saw some surprising uh things and you know all of that good stuff so um you know you know one of the surprises uh that shocked me um with the seahawks over the coach the seahawks look really really good um uh the chargers beat uh the, the football team which i'm not surprised at that after you know ryan fitzpatrick went out um uh the panthers over the jets now the the, the biggest shocker to me um was the Cardinals over the Titans. I mean, um, it was just a, a lot of good football played uh, from Thursday night. And then we got a game going on tonight between the Raiders and the, uh, the Raiders and the Ravens. Um, so, you know, like I said, a great week one. If this is what the NFL season is going to look like, then we're looking for a great season ahead of us that will have some very intriguing games uh, and, you know, all of that good stuff. Uh yeah, Chris, all the gear, really. Yes, that's how I do. You know, fly, Eagles, fly. But, you know, um, we had a host of games that came on. It was just good to see football back. Um, it was good to see, you know, um, my team play, a lot of other different teams play because I'm just a, a sports head, so I watch, you know, all the games, you know, the games that I can watch. Um and plus, I'm in a football pool, so so suicide pool. So I'm I'm able to um, I have to keep up with all the games, so I can you know put a pick in every week, and hopefully I can you know win by the end of the season. All right, so you know that's it on on on, on week one. And then we're gonna get right into things, and I'm gonna start out with this right here: Fly Eagles, fly. Um, my Eagles had an impressive win yesterday, uh, 36, uh, 32 to six. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I'm an Eagles fan and I'm going to take any win that we get. And that's what it's going to be. Um, did we look good? Yes, I, I think I think we did look good. Um, if you go back and you look at, you know, all the stats and all that good stuff and the box scores and all that good stuff. Jalen Hurts was 27 for 35 with uh, 264 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, we have Miles Sanders, 15 carries, 74 yards. I would like for that to be up. You give him 20 carries, he get 100 yards rushing. Um, um, Smith uh, had six receptions for 71 yards for his and a touchdown for his NFL debut. And uh, we can talk about the Falcons. I'll come back to the Eagles in a second. But the Falcons, uh, me personally, I think it's time for the Falcons to blow everything up and – I think they uh, invested too much time and given too much um, uh, hope in Matt Ryan. Those Matt Ryan days are over, in my personal opinion. He's not the Matty Ice that he used to be. And the only way Atlanta's going to move forward if they, you know, they got to blow that up. It's, it's that simple. And, you know, that leads me to the Eagles is that, you know, am I satisfied with the win? Yes. But. I'm I'm a realist. I know we were playing against the Falcons, and they're not a great team, which you're supposed to do that to a lesser team. I, I want to see us against, you know, better competition. We're one and zero. I'm satisfied about it. That's you know, you're only good as your last game. Um, uh, TC, real football is on that? No, not really. Uh, because if I'm not mistaken, 
I picked, I picked you guys, the Ravens, to beat you guys. They're going to beat y'all tonight. They're going to beat y'all in y'all brand new stadium. That's what it is. And so, you know, we, we the Eagles, uh, yes, was an impressive win. Did I enjoy the win? Yes, I did. I don't care who you're playing against. If they, you know, you put you play who's in front of you, and that's what they did, and they took care of business. But I definitely want to see more against a against better competition you know Jalen Hurts like I said he was what was his stats again I can't remember him he was um 27 for 35 for 264 yards and three touchdowns and you know that's very impressive and if I'm not mistaken he had like a 120 something um uh QBR and that's very impressive and you know I'm I'm not sold on him yet and a, a lot of people are but I'm not. I, I want a Super Bowl winning quarterback, and I'm not sure he's a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Will I get behind him if he shows that and all that stuff? Yes, I will. I will. I know we have a good young team. I want to see when, when there, because we got everything new for us: new coach, new uh, offensive schemes. As soon as people see, you know, some film on us and how we really are, that's how I want to. I want to see us. Then when people have enough film on us and can really scout the way they're supposed to. Am I impressed by our first I, start the season out right? Yes. We start the season out 1-0. and You're only good as your last game. And and I'll take it for right now. You know, next week um, is, is is something different. We, you know, we play against the uh, San Francisco 49ers, so who, you know, is a, a really, really good team. So, you know, uh, I'll see what happens then. But until then, it is fly, Eagles fly. Natel, um, LJ, you know, Cox, you know, all you guys, we be on there. Um, Robert Morris, I mean, we all be on, we all Eagles fans. Hey, my cousin Terrell, Eagles fans. They, they, them guys been Eagles fans since, since, since as long as I have. So I remember these guys, you know, being Eagles fans. And it's always been fly, Eagles fly. So uh, it's going to continue to be that way. I'm an Eagle win, lose, or draw. Um, um, and Sabrina, you, you are absolutely right. I, I couldn't laugh hard because, you know, he, he, he's sick. Like, he's been a Raiders fan. I'm going to go ahead and tell him that he might as well go ahead and cash out me my money because we're going to have a better record than the Raiders. John Gruden is going to kill his team. He, he's still living in that time when they had, you know, uh, when the, the tuck rule game that's that's he's still living in that time they ain't they ain't been legit since then they've been they've been tom brady killed him then so you know and they tell fly eagles fly you know what time it is that's what i'm talking about and so and every week anybody who get on here i will discuss my eagles that's one thing i will do i will discuss them and so it is what it is and we're gonna keep on moving and we're gonna move on uh to another game that Honestly, I picked these guys to win simply because I felt like Jacksonville was in a mess. And so we're going to talk about Trevor Lawrence's uh, NFL debut. First things first, I think Urban Meyer is um, is 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 sick to to have this guy come out to his NFL debut and throw the ball fifty one times. 51 times, that is a lot. 51 times is a lot uh, to throw the football. And he threw the ball. He was 28 for 51, 51 for 332 yards. He had three touchdowns and three interceptions. And a lot of people say he got some promise and all that good stuff. I think in this right here, we found out that, and, and, and we still got a lot of football, but I haven't been high on this guy since his freshman year in, in college at Clemson. I don't think that he will pan out to be and have all, you know, be, you know, the as you know, pan out to, to be able to handle all the hype that, that that comes with him. I don't think he would be that type of player. And and his debut, if this would have been anybody else, if this would have been anybody else, we 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 all be killing him right now. But all, all everybody's looking at is a 332. But you should have 300 some yards and you throw the ball 51 times. I mean, me personally, Tyron Taylor was 21 for 33, uh, 291. 
He was more efficient, had two touchdowns, no interceptions, and he he outplayed, you know, Trevor Lawrence. Um, and I think that Jacksonville has to find a running game in order for this guy to be successful. If Urban Meyer is going to go out there and air the ball out 51 times, then they're in trouble. He will have high stats as far as numbers or whatever, but they will continue to lose. And – we'll be making up excuses for him. And when I say we, I'm just talking about as a whole and a whole totality because I'm not going to make up excuses for him. I'm not sold on the guy. I don't think this was an impressive debut. A lot of people say he's a rookie. He played with Jacksonville. I don't care. We're going to give him the same criticism that we give all the other quarterbacks and stuff that play on bad teams or, you know, good teams. And they supposed to be, um, um, yeah, Travis, I agree with you. That that that's exactly what's gonna happen. It's gonna be a bunch of those. It's gonna be a bunch, and it might be an NFL record. Um, and they tell I'm not watching the game, but you said Derek Carr already turned over. Don't don't tell TC that man because he will be one sick individual, man. He'll be sick that you know because Derek Carr is not that good. Uh, well, he was at one particular time. I think John Gruden kind of hurt him a little bit, but. You know, and, and I feel like Trevor Lawrence, I mean, it's time for us to really take a, a good, good look at him and, and, and say, is he really that good? If you go back and you look at the tape from freshman year until now, hasn't much changed. And he just has a whole lot of hype to him. Um, and at the end of the day, if this would have been anybody else, if this been uh, – Justin Fields. Oh, they will be killing him right now. But they're going to give this guy time and they're going to give him a pass over and over again. But I'm not going to give him a pass. I don't think this was a great NFL debut. Yeah, he had three touchdowns. He also had three interceptions. And then a lot of people trying to compare it to, oh, well, Peyton Manning had high interceptions whenever he was a a rookie and all that good stuff. First things first, we're not going to compare this guy to Peyton Manning. And that's what we're not going to do. I, I know I definitely won't. And if anybody come around me trying to talk about it, then I, I, I won't listen to it. Because, one, they're two different caliber quarterbacks, in my personal opinion. Peyton Manning is very smart. He know he knows that he's not athletic and he'll get rid of the football. Yes, the coach were not good whenever he came in. But it's one thing I, I do know the big head general, he was a different breed of quarterbacks. And I and I just keep saying this. Trevor Lawrence did not have a good, in my opinion, NFL debut. Now, next week, it might be different. Let's see who they play against next week because I haven't looked at the, the, the next week's schedule. I take one week at a time. Excuse me. One week at a time. They play the Broncos. And the Broncos is, is 1-0 with a – you know, a good defense. They might end up with 10 sacks this week. Von Miller might have five of them. And if you don't see it that way, either he's going to get killed or, uh, or you know, he better start getting rid of the football. Or Urban Meyer better start running the football. Or he's going to have a short-lived NFL career because you get knocked around in this NFL, man. It's hard to get back. He'll be punch drunk. So, you know, I don't think it was a good debut. We'll see how round two goes whenever we go to week two. And they and, and if I'm not mistaken, they play home against um, against uh, the Broncos. Uh, the Broncos right now are a six-point favorite, but I, I just don't think it was a good NFL debut. Um, what Travis say? I'm always leery of guys that play around a lot of talent in college. Hey, Travis, I don't, I don't know how often have you seen me talk about him, but I said that he was a product – of all the talent and stuff around him because a lot of people gave him hype, but he had a lot of talent around him. And that, and I think that's what made him better. You know, you had the ETNs and all those receivers that Clemson and stuff had, and I feel like that was it. And once some of the talent went away and they didn't have as much talent, or they could have had a lot of talent, but I think that, you know, up here it was kind of egotistical with him and uh, Dabo Sweeney and Clemson. And you've seen that they were ill prepared for games. And I and and I'm I'm leery of guys like that too. But you know, a lot of them get passes because 
You know, he, he, he can be around a bunch of talent, but they try to say he made the talent better. He got a strong arm and this, that, and the third. I don't care how strong your arm is. You can have the strongest arm. But if you don't get rid of that football at time and you and, and you're not. And I, I just and, and at the end of the day, I just don't think he's as good as portrayed. And I could be wrong. I might have to come back on here, you know, months later and say, hey, I was wrong about, you know, Trevor Lawrence. But I have been on him like this right here since his uh, since his freshman season at Clemson. And we'll see next week. We'll see if, if the Broncos handle them pretty well. And, you know, and again, I'm going to say it one more time. Not a great NFL debut in my personal opinion. And we're going to move on. We're going to talk about the Thursday night game. More Cowboys and more Bucks. That's that's where we're at because that was a pretty decent game. And a lot of people are saying the Cowboys are back and the Cowboys played a real, real good game. And – um. Me personally, you say more Cowboys and more Bucks. It's it's real hard because, and, and I would say it was more Cowboys in, in in losing than the Bucks winning. And here's why: because I'm watching the game and the defense give the Cowboys, you know, the ball several times in great field position, and they didn't capitalize. And I say this right here. It's not just against Tom Brady and whatever team he's playing for. I just feel like this against any team that you're playing. If your defense gives you the football, you need to capitalize with touchdowns. And that's what Dak Prescott and the Cowboys did not do. And lo and behold, you know, down the, down the stretch, they took the lead on a field goal. But I had already knew with the time and stuff that they had and the way, you know, the game was going. I mean, Tampa Bay was able to get up and down the field. He's all they needed was a field goal. And so I felt like it was more Cowboys losing than the Bucks winning. And a lot of people might disagree with me, but uh, TC definitely doesn't. But, you know, he, he agrees with me. But the Cowboys had every opportunity to put that game away. I even texted him. I said, oh, man, the Cowboys is about to upset the dang on Bucks on the road. And then I looked at the time and I seen what happened. I said, nah, they about, they, 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 they about to give it up. This is what they about to do. They didn't manage the clock well. They didn't capitalize on, on turnovers, like I said. Um, they had too many miscues. Um, I mean, it was just a, a bevy of things. And, you know, did they play a good game? Yes, I believe they played a good game. But at the end of the day, if you're playing against the the, the reigning Super Bowl champions, aren't don't most of the time don't these teams get everybody's best punch? Yes, they do. So I expected that from them. Now, this week, the Cowboys play again and they play against the Chargers. And we will see. And it, this is my question about the Cowboys. And you know, say more Cowboys. Because in that game, I got to go back and look at it. But I wanted this because at for a minute, I was like, did, does Ezekiel Elliott play? Like, it's like they all made a concerted effort to pass the football and not have a running game. And yeah, it could have been Tampa Bay's front four, but. At some point in time, you got to trust that you paid that man. And Ezekiel had a, Ezekiel Elliott had 11 carries for 33 yards. They passed the ball 58 times. That Prescott had uh, 403 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. And my thing is, is like 58 times? Is, is that's what the Cowboys are going to do? And everybody makes up excuses about a whole lot of stuff, and I hate that they make up excuses like this right here. They they simply said that uh, Ezekiel Elliott won't be you know the, the 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 Russian attacker that he used to be because he doesn't have the offensive line that he had the year he led the the league in rushing and I hate that because you know if you're a good running back we never heard that about Barry Sanders Barry Sanders didn't have you know the the great line that you know Emmett Smith had with the Cowboys and he still was able to do things if you're a good running back. 
you, you're a good running back, plain and simple. That That's just the way I look at it. I, I, I feel like the Cowboys don't make a certain effort to run Ezekiel Elliott. He doesn't look like he's engaged. Um, he looks like he, ever since he got paid, it's kind of like he's just there. And until they run him, they are going to be a mediocre team. It showed last year before Dak got hurt. Yeah, Dak had impressive numbers, but were the Cowboys winning? No, they weren't. So this is the same old Cowboys. Like, you know, let's go out there and we can put up a whole bunch of points and uh, good stats and stuff and still lose games. Um, and, TC, I agree with you. I don't think that he's he's happy there either. I think that he wants out. I think the holdout – uh, and and them not paying him initially kind of took a toll on him. And I think that it's showing now. Like, you know, yeah, he looks like he's in shape, but I don't think that he's fully engaged with the Dallas Cowboys. I think that he's just there. I mean, he's just there. And, you know, they're not running him. He doesn't look like he's, you know, like I said, he doesn't look engaged. So in this game, it was a hell of a game. It turned out to be one of the – the uh one of the good games uh to start the season out um you know i think that um tampa bay is going to have to run the football a whole lot more um you know for net uh, he was nine carries for 32 yards if you think tom brady you know throwing the ball 50 times a game yes yes tom brady is who he is and a lot of people going you know oh well it's just tom brady but i mean at, 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 at some point in time, Father Time is undefeated. And he, he's defeating Father Time right now. But if he throws that ball 50 times a game, that arm is going to wear out. It's that simple. Um, so, uh, me, I still think it's, 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 it's more Cowboys. I, I, and I hope the Cowboys continue to do this right here because they're in my division. And I, I hope they don't run Ezekiel. I hope they think they can just pass, 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 because that's, that's not a formula for winning. You got to have a good run attack, and if, until he gets engaged and gets involved, and they get him involved, it's going to um, it, it's going to uh, it's going to come back and bite them. All right, and so we're going to move on. We're going to do our, our, our quick talks, and um, one of the quick talks, and we're just going to get right into it. It's still, it's some of it's football, some of it's other stuff, but we're going to start out with Cam Newton. Is Cam done? In my personal opinion. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick went out with a hip injury. He got six to eight weeks. And um, I think that a reunion with Ron Rivera and Cam Newton would be the ideal place for him to be. But uh, if they don't call him, I think Cam Newton is possibly done because if he can't go somewhere where he knows the system, he knows the coach and he would fit in well and they need a quarterback. I think that, you know, he's done. I don't see him being able to go anywhere else unless somebody just, like, has a catastrophic injury. And Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's out uh, six to eight weeks with a hip injury. And it could be longer. You, you know, you never know with hip injuries and all that good stuff and his age and attrition and all that stuff. So, you know, if Cam doesn't get picked up by the football team or at least get a workout, you know, anything like that, he may be done. I hope not because I, I still think he could be a, a good quarterback. Uh, the other thing is uh, why, uh, the football team may not call it because he doesn't want to get vaccinated and Ron Rivera is immune deficient. All right. And uh, Djokovic, he was denied his um, his calendar slam. Uh, he was defeated Sunday in the U.S. Open. And, you know, it's just unfortunate that people don't realize how tough that calendar slam is in tennis. You know, Serena Williams uh, almost did it some, you know, some years ago. It, it's just real tough, like just to try to, you know, be in all of the grand slams and com complete a slam, uh, all the slams in, in, in a calendar year. It's just real tough, you know, uh, but shout out to him, though. Um, uh, next is uh, Matt Scherzer. He gets his uh, his 3,000 uh, uh, strikeout. That is very, very impressive in itself because, you know, striking out 3,000 people, that's a lot of strikeouts and a lot of balls you have thrown uh, in, in the MLB. Uh, shout out to Matt Scherzer. He gets that. That the those he, he's one of the strikeout kings, you know, because it's 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 a lot of um pitchers that have have a lot of strikeouts and to reach three thousand, that's a great milestone for Matt Scherzer. Um, and shout out to him. Hopefully, he, you know, he he continues to strike out. People stays healthy, shoulder stays healthy. He's able to pitch for you know a, a whole lot longer. 
All right. My next quick talk is uh, Ben Simmons mess. Ben Simmons got a whole big old mess. Like he's trying to hold out from the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, the Sixers uh, feel like, you know, his 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 draft stock is is dropping um, and uh, because the mess is going on. And he says that it's not his responsibility to come from his camp for for him to to get his draft his draft stock um not draft stock his his trade uh trade value up i apologize for that um and my thing is that that's the dumbest thing anybody could say like if you really want to be traded then you got to show what you are and what you are about and if this team if if your trade value is low this team can't get rid of you nobody's going to give what you want uh, for Ben Simmons. Um, and for him, I think that regardless of where you go, you gonna have to man up and play basketball. You can't run from, you know, situations feeling like, Oh, I don't want to be here. after I signed a contract. I think that's the biggest problem that I have with a lot of these uh, players and stuff now is that, you know, they're so self-centered and they so into themselves and they feel like, you know, everybody, um, um, yeah, hey Trav, I agree with you. They should have traded him last season whenever they had the chance. I felt like that too. I felt like they should have traded him and moved on from him. You wouldn't have this problem now. Um, but you know, I'm all for guys being able to pick their own way and you know choose where they want to go. But like my thing is, if you open up that Pandora's box, y'all get mad whenever owners want to trade you and all that good stuff, and you want to be there. And here lately, it hasn't been owners just trading Pete trading players just to trade players because it was you know business for the team it's a lot of these owners that um and gm's been making trades and they make trades based off you know what that player wants you know some of the other guys the smaller guys yeah they might get they might get put in a trade package because i mean a lot of them already know that they they are trade bait and, and but it's been a lot of them being consulted before they get traded so they can go to a destination they want to. And so now, you know, I don't see anybody giving the players a fit about them doing exactly what the owners were doing. Oh, we signed a contract. Oh, I don't want to live up to that contract now. So you need to get rid of me. You need to find the best way to get rid of me. How is somebody going to get rid of you on and, 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 and your trade value is terrible because everybody has seen what you're all about and seeing that really you don't have the fortitude to really you know play up on the pressure and so you know it's just a whole big old mess and it pisses me off because this is going to be a trickle down effect after a while and i've said it many a times that these players are opening up you know a can of worms that they really shouldn't want to open because the next collective bargaining agreement is going to be hard for them to get what they want based off of everything that's going on from Ben Simmons mess, you know, uh, um, then low management and all that type of stuff. It's just going to be, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be problems for him. Travis said the players have more powers than ever. Yeah, they do have more power. They have more power because, you know, a lot of owners, a lot of owners have took a back seat and they've given players this and they have power in this collective bargaining agreement. And plus, you know, they and I wouldn't say they have more power. I just think that it's a player's league now because we have um, uh, a commissioner that's that that's he works for the owners, but he, he knows that the players is what brings in the money. But what's going to happen is in, in two years when that collective bargaining agreement comes back up, the owners are going to play hardball and the player is going to give up a lot of that. Don't be surprised if you start seeing um, if you start seeing um, later on these, the, the, you know, non guaranteed contracts or, or you got to play a certain amount of games to get this guaranteed money. And it starts to end up being like football. And if you think the Warriors should trade for him, they're going to have to give up too much uh, to get him. Uh, don't think that the Philadelphia 76 is just going to let him go and not get anything and then remember in uh in trades it has to be you know dollar for dollar um it, it's going to be dollar for dollar and try what you what, what you say uh that's never going to happen what what's going to happen what, what's never going to happen uh are you talking about the um the um 
the contracts, the non-guaranteed contracts, if that's what you're talking about. Oh, trust me. Um, if if the if the owners want it to happen, they can definitely make it happen. You got to realize that these owners are these owners are are um, are billionaires. And at the end of the day, uh, yeah, you talking about the contracts, okay? If you're talking about that, these owners are billionaires, and if they do a lockout, trust and believe. The only people it won't affect is like the LeBrons, the KDs, the Russes, the James Hardens, the Kyries, uh, Steph Curry, uh, Clay Thompson, you know, those guys. And if they do that, then what about all these role players? Because we're, we're, we're talking about the top tier guys. So you got LeBron, AD, uh, you know, Chris Paul, uh, Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, you know, the Donovan Mitchells and those guys. But once you get away from those guys who's getting all these big contracts, you got guys that's basically living paycheck to paycheck. And that's where it hits. That's where it hits home at. Trust me, I've been a part of a lockout. I've seen it how it affects the lower paid guys. I've seen how it affects the role players because they're not making the big time money that that you know these other guys are making and, and don't have the big endorsement deals. And see, this NBA now is top heavy, so they pay everybody else all this top money. Um, um, yeah, if the cap goes down, that works out for the owners. That really works out for the owners because if the cap goes down, they don't have to pay all these big names all this money. More money goes into their pocket. They they don't have to spend all of that big money. Now, the reason why I say it's going to be non-guaranteed contracts and stuff like that is because they already have some non-guaranteed contracts. But what I'm saying is whenever it comes to these top tier players like Kawhi Leonard, who wants to play 41 games a year. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, I, I'm not saying that, that guaranteed contracts are going to leave completely. What I'm saying is it's going to be some stipulations for these guaranteed contracts. These owners are not just going to continue to go for, you know, guys sitting out and they missing out on TV games because ultimately – the reason why these contracts are so big is because of the TV deal. And so if the TV, if, if, if the TV deal is not being met like it's supposed to, what you think is going to happen? The TV going to start backing out. You're going to lose money and the owners don't want to lose money. So is something going to happen with guaranteed contracts. I guarantee you because it's already been discussed. It's already been said a few times. My players want to drop games they want to they want to go from 82 games to like 65 or something like that and the owners are like well if y'all want to go to that then we'll go back to the negotiating table then that there go more of your money gone so it's some stuff that's going to happen in this next cba and the owners have the power because they're billionaires they have other businesses other than these basketball teams they have some of them own football teams some of them in the oil. I mean, they just got businesses and stuff like that. So as far as them worried about, you know, money, I I, 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 I trust me, my brother was a part of the lockout and it hit a lot of players in the pocket hard guys that, you know, sign lower deals. And, you know, they was like, well, we got to do something for these players. And so the, the owners really want. And then they 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 put in that they will renegotiate in like you know five or six years, and so we're on this one right here. And so the TV deal went up. And so when they go back two years now, they, trust me, some stuff is going to change. Yes, the players have a little bit of power now, but now they're starting to abuse their power. And I didn't mean to stay on this this long, but you know, sixty five games would be great. Me personally, I'm an eighty two to um, I'm an eighty two game guy. Uh, that's how it's always been. I think players need to stop making up excuses about playing something they love to do. Um, they really have it a whole lot better than back in the day. Whenever they go to L.A., they do a whole California trip. 
where it used to be you might go there today, go back, come back in a week or two and go to the now they, they do everything that's convenient. They're flying on their own private planes with all of that good stuff. They stay in the best hotels. It's no excuse for them. Like these guys make up excuses for everything. And the more we continue to cater to them, the worse off it's going to be. Because after a while, if you go from 65, they're going to want to say that, that that they want 45. You know, 65 is going to be too much. What these guys don't want to do is play back to back. And I think that's that's a travesty to the game. It's always been back to backs. You know, sometimes you're going to have back to backs. Now, I, I remember doing the time where the lockout had happened and they come back and they had a whole bunch of back to backs. Now, I didn't agree with that. But every now and again, you're going to have some back to back games. And I just think that if you're getting paid to do a job and that's your job, go out there and play. You know, you talk about you love the game. If you love the game, then go for it. And Travis said, remove some teams. You can't remove teams, then you start getting rid of players. And then you should, the TV deal goes down again. If you hadn't made the playoffs in 15 years, you got to go. <laughs> hey, guess what? Um, see, that's the thing, Trav. That's why I say money moves everything. Because you wouldn't realize this. Based off the, the most profitable team in the NBA is the New York Knicks. Hadn't won an NBA championship until, since 1976, if I'm not mistaken. Sometimes, sometimes 76, 77, 78, something like that. And they're the most profitable team in the NBA. And so money moves everything. That's 74. Okay, you got me, 74. And they, they, they're the most profitable team in the NBA, which means that the money moves everything. So if the owners see that they're going to lose money, some things are going to change. The players about making money, but don't want to do whatever they got to do to make the money. And that's that that's that's what it all boils down to. All right, I'm gonna move on. I ain't mean to stay on there that long. All right, and we're gonna say congrats to the Hall of Famers. That's the next quick talk. Um, you know, I had a few of them to go in. Ben Wallace's um um shoot, I got a brain freeze now. But um Tony Ku coach. Uh, my brother Eric hit me up and asked me, was Tony Kukoc a, a Hall of Famer? And I told him, you know, based off NBA standards, no. But the Nashville Hall of Fame is, is the whole totality of your career. The guy had a great career overseas. He he done a lot of great things overseas. So that's the reason why he's a Hall of Famer. Um, um, yeah, Trav, I, I kind of agree with you, but I, I'm not going I'm, I'm not going to knock the guys because that's the way we are now. Everybody gets into the Hall of Fame, no matter how good or bad you were. So, you know, shout out to all of them. Um, something interesting that just happened today. Uh, USC uh, fired a coach after the loss. They lost to Stanford. The guy had a pretty decent record. He was like almost 46, 47, and 22 or something like that over the last few years. They fired him after the loss. I guess USC said, we lose to Stanford. You got to go. They let him go right after the game. And that's 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 the uh, that's the first time that I've seen that happen in a long time. USC won't have that crap. All right. And we are definitely done with quick talks. And we're going to talk about the game that's going on tonight. Uh, the Ravens and the Raiders. Uh, I actually picked uh, the Ravens to win this game uh, because I'm just not sold on the, the Raiders. Uh, they moved to Las Vegas. They got this nice stadium. And I just feel like um, uh, John Gruden had did a disservice to, to the black and silver. Um, they had, you know, some pieces that he got rid of. And now he's trying to go back and revisit all that stuff. They gave him a 10 year contract, which I think that was the dumbest thing that I could have ever seen uh, right now. Uh, it looks like they're in the second quarter uh, and they're down seven to nothing. I just don't think that the Raiders will. Uh, yeah, TC, I'm glad you said it. I didn't say it. You said it. You said we stink. Um, and try, you said the, the Ravens look bad. The Raiders look. <laughs> and I, I haven't watched the game yet. Once I get off of here, I'm going to go check out the rest of it. But I'm keeping up with it on my phone. I see a seven to nothing. Um, and I, I take y'all word for it. You know, TC might be being a little bit harsh because he's pissed off with his team right now. But I, if if I had to choose, I had picked the, the Ravens to win this game uh, over the Raiders to start the season off. I just didn't feel like, you know, the the, the Raiders was a good team. All right, and um, we have week two uh, lined up, and week two coming up, 
you got the Giants and the the Washington football team. I think the Giants will take that if, if they can keep Danny, Danny Jones from uh, fumbling the football. Um, the Bengals and the Bears, um, uh, that game, it might be a toss-up. That game might end in a tie. The Texans and the Browns. Um, it's one thing I know. I said Baker Mayfield, all he had to do was manage games and not turn the ball over, and what happened? That's exactly what he did. Um, it was just it, it was just bad. Like you know, he just the Browns turned out to be the Browns. We got the Rams and the Colts, and I and I feel bad for the Colts because I feel like they got a pretty decent team, but they're gonna run up on the Rams, and I think that the Rams uh, may put the Colts at zero and two to start the season. Uh, the Bills and the Dolphins. Uh, the Bills gonna have to get that loss off their uh, shoulder from you know Pittsburgh. They didn't play well at home, and I'm not sure if that quarterback is worth all the money that uh, that you know they paid him. The Patriots and the Jets. That should be uh, a a good win for the Patriots. You know, I think the Patriots has a, a decent team. Uh, Mac Jones played pretty good. They just lost to uh, you know a better Dolphins team. You know, because they said the Dolphins are good. Uh, the 49ers and the Eagles. I told you I would not. I, I wouldn't bet against my Eagles, and I'm going with my Eagles to go two and zero. I think that we'll beat the 49ers, plain and simple. Um, um, the thing about it is, um, I'm going to go with LJ. I mentioned you earlier. You said, "What about your quarterback? You late?" Uh, this week right here will be the week that we can tell if Jalen Hurts is going to be um, is going to be uh, a decent quarterback and you know a good starting quarterback. Um, so I, I picked the Eagles over the 49ers next week. The Steelers and the Raiders, I got the Steelers, the Panthers and the Saints. Hey, everybody want to talk, and I, I, I'm going to talk about that here in a few minutes. Um, uh, the Saints, you know, everybody, I, I, I'll talk about that in a few minutes. I'm not even going to go there, but I got the Saints over the Panthers. Uh, the Broncos and the Jaguars, I got the Broncos, the Vikings and the Cardinals. Uh, my brother Eric, he's going to be, he going to be, um, He's going to be pitiful because they're going to be 0-2 to start the season. Now the Cardinals are going to run all over them. The Bucks going to beat the Falcons. The Chargers going to beat the Cowboys. Cowboys be 0-2. Uh, the Seahawks and the Titans. Oh, Seahawks will probably beat the Titans because the Seahawks are legit. I, I saw them. They're one of my the surprise teams. And the Ravens and the Chiefs, I think the Chiefs will beat the Ravens. And then the Monday night game, the Lions and the Packers. The Packers should, uh, if, if Aaron Rodgers go back, he, he, he will be – he will be just fine, and I think the Packers will win that. All right, so that that that's my thing for for week two, and and then we're gonna go with the most impressive over the week. Uh, I'm gonna have to get at the Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston, and I've been saying this. I said that you know Sean Payton would 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 do a disservice if he didn't start Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston was a good quarterback in college. He was a decent quarterback coming into the NFL. He just didn't have the right guidance and the right leadership. Uh, if anybody watches football and pay attention to it, not just watch it, study sports and all that stuff. If you look at where he was before he went to be a backup last year, he, he led the league in passing. He had 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. But if you go back and look, look at and, 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 and anybody, I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. I'm not comparing Jameis Winston and Tom Brady to each other. I'm putting the situations together, okay? So the whole thing that I'm comparing it to. But if you look at it, and I said this before, Bruce Aarons is a guy that likes to air the football out. Quarterback hold the ball. It's, it's true. When he was the offensive coordinator for Pittsburgh, that's what he did to Roethlisberger. Roethlisberger had high turnovers when Bruce Aarons was the offensive coordinator. Now, you take the the Bucks from last year, before Tom Brady decided to, you know, him and Brian Leftwich got together and seen what was best for the team, they were trying to air it out. If you look, Tom Brady struggled the first part of the year because Bruce Aarons is a guy that likes to air the football out. And you see what Tom Brady and Byron Leftwich did. They started going back to the Patriot way of doing things. Let's 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 get the ball out of Tom's hands in, in less than three seconds. And that's what happened. And if you watch what Sean Payton did with, with Jameis Winston, that's basically what he did. Whenever he needed the deep ball, he got the deep ball because everything was open. And also they used Alvin Kamara. They got they got a nice offensive attack. 
And I feel like this is that this was the most impressive in my personal opinion. And, you know, other than, you know, a lot of people saying, you know, Jalen Hurts was very impressive. He was real impressive. But, you know, I seen this from Jalen Hurts last year when he played against the Saints. And then after we got some film on him, he kind of fell off. So but I to see Jameis and the way he played and to outplay the 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 former MVP and in, in Aaron Rodgers and 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 then the defense to hold what's the name them to to the Packers to three points that was so freaking impressive to me so the most impressive goes to you know the Saints with Jameis Winston how he played he looked like he was having fun he looked like a kid in the candy store and he just had fun those guys trust and believe in him also so that's the team we need to watch out for you know that's just game one I agree but um um, but that's a team you got to watch out for. They got a good defense. They got a quarterback because I felt like Drew Brees were holding him back last year because he couldn't get the deep ball like like he wanted, like they wanted to. And now you got Jameis Winston that has an arm. He's showing his accuracy. Now we got those dunk downs. You're not throwing in double and triple coverage and all that stuff. And he didn't have any turnovers yesterday. He didn't have any interceptions. So that was the most impressive to me. So shout out to Jameis. I mean, and then another one that was real impressive, and I and, and it kind of shocked me, was the way that the damn Cardinals stomped all over the Tennessee Titans. Like, I mean, they they now they took them out to the woodshed and, and, and gave them a good old-fashioned whooping. Like, you know, I didn't expect that because I said, it, you know, the game was in Tennessee, if I'm not saying I said – Tennessee would beat the Cardinals, but the Cardinals proved me wrong. They came and they beat the Titans and they beat them real good. Um, the biggest disappointment I would say would be Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers just looked like he not like he was a rookie quarterback. Uh, I don't know if all the animosity from everything that was going on is carried over now, but he looked like he didn't want to be out there yesterday. That was very disappointing to watch that. Um, it was just, you know, it was real bad to to to, to watch them and 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 watch the way they played. Um, the other disappointment was um, the Browns, and a lot of people say, well, they were playing against the Kansas City Chiefs. No, the Browns dominated that game in the first half. They was up like twenty-two to ten or something like that, and the, they they had the, the the Chiefs on the edge, and they ended up losing the game thirty-three to uh, to twenty-nine. They only scored seven points in the second half. And, you know, y'all got Baker Mayfield. Everybody's saying this is going to be his best year ever. And this, that, and the third. He could not complete the deal. You're on the road. You got to lead. You had the, you know, the, the reigning AFC champs on the ropes. And you should have easily won that game. Uh, you can say what you want to say about how good Patrick Mahomes is, but y'all had opportunities to step on their throat and you didn't. And that's what I say about Baker Mayfield. A lot of people, oh, Baker this and Baker that. No, he doesn't have that type of of, of, of game with him to, 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 to take his team to the next level, in my personal opinion. Because if you got those guys down in Kansas City, because I, I, I watched the first half of the game. I was able to watch the first half of the game. And, the, I mean, the Browns were getting up and down the field. Getting up and down the field. And – Lo and behold, I mean, you know, they let that one slip away. Um, so, I mean, that that was another disappointment. And I know it was disappointing in some of you guys' eyes because everybody been talking about, oh, Baker Mayfield, this is going to be his year. Uh, I didn't say surprise team protect Rodgers out this harsh uh, harsh words. Yeah, I, and, and I feel like some of those guys don't rock with him now, Janet, whenever it comes to um, – uh, Aaron Rodgers. It's, it's almost like, you know, they know that he he has one foot out the door already. So that was very disappointing to watch them play yesterday and only give up three points. But, you know, it goes to show the Saints was on their game and stuff yesterday. All right. So, you know, I was, that's my show for today. And my final word would be um, it's a lot that's happened over the last week. Um within my family and, you know, have to reevaluate things and, you know, all that good stuff. And I'm not going to get into detail about everything that happened. If you know us, you, you, you've you known what's happened, but some stuff has happened over the last couple of days also. Um, as a matter of fact, last night, something in our family. But, you know, um, and this is not 
um no political show and this is just something that I, I i feel strongly about if you see me and you see me in walmart the mall or anything like that you'll see me with a mask on uh i am fully vaccinated and i'm not ashamed to say it uh and i don't do it and i, I didn't only just do it because for myself but i did it for others i have uh family members that are immune deficient i have older family members that you know their immune system is is not as great as it used to be um and i'll say this and, and i did it also for myself because a lot of people don't know unless people tell you at one point in time i was diagnosed with sleep apnea and that's one of the worst things that you could possibly have because you can die in your sleep you can think that you're you 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 you're wide awake and you're really not. You think you're resting well and you're really not. You stop breathing and you sleep, and that has a lot to do with throat and lungs and all that good stuff. So I just advise people and I say to people, like you know, um, y'all, please I, I don't make it political. It's just about being human, uh, decent human beings. Protect each other. It has nothing to do with, you know, rights, freedoms. Nobody's trying to take your freedoms. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get past this pandemic. And I have seen enough death over the last couple that I can speak on this and I can truly say that COVID is for real and everybody needs to you know, mask up. And if you don't believe in wearing a mask, but here's the thing that I say, you don't have to wear a mask. That's your right. You have a right not to wear it. But whenever you come into my space, you come into my space, then your rights are thrown out the door because you're invading my rights then. So whenever you do stuff like that, think about it. And for those of you who don't think it's real, you think it's a hoax and you think that, you know, it only affects a certain population of people. That's a lie. It's coming for everybody. It's coming from people in great shape, people in bad shape, old people, young people, you know. And so I just encourage everybody to, you know, do your part. If we do our part, we can work this thing and, and and get it away. It might be a part of our lives, but we can somehow or another, you know, you know, level it out and get it to a point where it's not affecting our everyday lives. So I encourage everybody to think about it, pray about it, and consider others because you never know what people are going through. You don't know if if somebody's diabetic if they have cancer, if they're immune deficient. And so you got to take all of that stuff into consideration. Just because someone looks healthy don't always mean that they're completely healthy. And so the way I look at it is I have family members that's in their 80s that I go around and I don't want to do anything to affect them. I have siblings who, you know, that 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 they have pre-existing conditions. I have family members like that. So, you know, I have to look out for them also. So don't just think that it's all about you. Make sure that you're doing it for the next person, because we always like just a few days ago, it was 9-11. Everybody talking about coming together and every like during that time, it was, you know, help everybody out because it affected everybody. Well, this affects everybody. So do your part. Be a, 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 a decent human being and look out for everybody. Some people don't believe in this and some people do. But I'm a firm believer it's real because I've seen it affect my family like as a whole. And so, like, you know, it's been a tough time for us. We ask for y'all to continue to pray for us, pray for each other. Um, and just let's just let's keep trying to work together and, and get this thing under control. Um, and TC, I agree. We definitely need your prayers. She came. Appreciate you. Love you. And uh, Janet, I agree. I'm waiting for mine too. 
So with that being said, um, hey, I appreciate everybody who got on. You know, it was it was a joy to talk to you for the last almost an hour. Uh, I'll be back next week. Um, same time, 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern. Next Monday, um, we'll talk about more football or anything sports that's going on. So just want to tell you guys, thank you for checking it out. Uh, have a good night and uh, have a good rest of your week and, and, and live it to the fullest. Y'all have a good night.